Well guys, we're continuing on here, just hustling, trying to get things done here on this big, big, big project. So, I don't even know where to begin here, what I've done here. Uh, I've been plumbing, I don't like this. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a straight one for the discharge. That way this, this is an old used hose and I don't like it either. It's kinking up and but it's worse because of that 90. I need to put a straight on there way I can loop it straight back. Would be way better. I plumbed. These these ISMs are like the er, like the early CM870 ISXs. They had an air operated VGT turbo instead of electronic actuator. This is the actual actuator right here and it's air driven. So I found with my experience on the 870s that some owners would complain that they would smoke a little bit till they built up air and they couldn't figure out why well the actuator to control the vgt if if the tank bled off to nothing the, the i noticed that once the air built up and this vgt actuator started supplying air to the turbo then it would clear right up so what i did is that on even on some of the trucks they had them plumbed to the secondary tank and you guys know as well as i do that when that truck builds air the secondary usually goes up last primary will build up and then then the secondary will finally get built up so i built this one I, I went to the primary tank with this one uh i got a fuse panel off of ebay let's look at this thing not ebay uh amazon hi lulu what's the matter come here Get a little wiener girl. Hey, I know it's tough. All this crap in the way, huh? Where are you going over there for? Well, come on over, baby. Come here. Step around all that stuff. Come here, honey. I'm right here. Oh, baby. Anyway, me and Lulu were trying to figure this out. So what was I saying? So anyways, I plumbed, I plumbed that. I plumbed the... Um, I plumbed the uh, air dryer, I got that plumbed, uh, got the actual purge line plumbed and the reservoir line plumbed to the uh, air governor, uh, batteries, I'll show you where I'm at here, i turn my light on on my head, which is hard to do with a winter dog. It's already on. But I got batteries in it. And I got everything there. So now, anyways, what I was saying before the wiener dog wanted some attention. So I got a fuse panel. It's got six relays. Here, you want to hop up there, sweetheart? Okay. Hi, Lulus. Hi, Lulu. Hi, Lulu. So... We've got lots of things that we can do here. Um, so, the main power and grounds to the ECM. Oh, well, now Oscar. See, my wife's gone to Idaho for a week. And I've just been... I hate, I hate leaving them at home. And part of the reason is, is that I, I love my... Just like kids, you know. They're like my children. Hi, Bubba. And the problem is, is that... We've got a doggy door in the house, but I usually block it off when I'm gone. I don't want them running outside. And there, there's, you know, it, there, it's pretty common practice anymore with the really screwed up society that we live in. I mean, people will drive by and shoot your dogs or they'll steal them, especially if there's a pit bull out in the yard. They'll steal them and then go fight them and kill them. You know, that's that's the absolute decline of the morality. And just it, it's just, I don't know. Well, I'm getting off on a rant. Anyways, another thing I worry about with the door being blocked off is that if the house catches on fire, my dogs are in there. So I try to take them all with me when I when I go to work and my wife is gone just to prevent maybe something like that happening. It's a little bit of an inconvenience, but it's like it's just like having your family with you. Huh. It's like having your family with you, huh, Oscar Meyer? Yep. Anyways, uh, I'll, I'll continue on. I'm going to put these guys in the truck. Okay, we're on the Cummins Quick Serve. 
and we want to go this is an ism cm875 we'll go to the wiring schematic i'm gonna blow it up oops sometimes you can just do it like that yeah just double tap it takes a while for the thing to clear up to where you can read it oh and it's going the other way for some reason there we go okay let me get this thing to clear up and we'll have to use this in conjunction with the 7600 international wiring schematic okay let's look and see here guys wakey wakey come on okay it's starting to clear up where i can read it okay so we already have these wired okay we have this ground and this positive is already wired back there okay so as you can see that's coming into here this will actually get the battery what is this here this is going to be your ignition switch right so that's the next thing that I've got to do. I've got to figure out. Okay, ignition input signal. This is where we've got to start wiring to our ignition switch. And there'll be a five amp fuse. Now, do we want to do, I think the thing, the easiest way to do that. It'd be easier to put an inline fuse in there or use it in conjunction with the fuse panel. So it's going to be coming off pin 39 off the ECM, right? Off the, should be the J1 plug if I'm remembering correctly. So what we could do, I'm just kind of curious. Let me get a power probe. Okay, I had to peel this insulation back i wanted to make sure i was plugging the right things into the right things here so the way international does it they've got prefixes on their numbers on their wires and anything with the l is transmission okay so this basically is the power and ground feed to the control module back there and i peeled this one back and read the numbers on it and this is a k which is I'm trying to remember what that means, but anyways, it's going to the fan solenoid. So I can get this. That's one thing I neglected to get was some damn, uh, some damn electrical tape today. I was just completely spaced it out. I couldn't find any in my truck. I had to go look at a swather yesterday that I couldn't believe. I I went to put I, well. You guys, I did, did a video of the regen process, and it had an SCR inlet temperature fault. That one. Well, I went to put those temperature sensors in there, which they were faulty, and that solved the problem. Um, but I noticed when I got over there, that whole SCR catalyst system kind of sits on a frame in there. And there's six bolts, three on each side, with bolt and a nut that hold it all together. And every bolt and nut was gone out of that thing. And it was just sitting there bouncing around. Anyway. Come on. All these problems that you run into. I'm going to get the split loom back over it like it's supposed to be. It's not being very easily to deal with here. Now, this can go down here. And plug into this. I'm going to have to get underneath to do it. can't do it from up here. Uh, so here's the ECM power right here. This plug. This is going to be powering up the trans. And I don't mean your modern day trans either. This is a transmission that actually works. 
This is a tranny that actually knows what the hell it is. Okay. Okay, the transmission controller should be powered up now. I know the ECM's powered up. I already checked it. I'm trying to figure out in this wiring schematic. Hold on, my Leatherman fell out of my pocket and sliding down my leg. I tripped over the freaking wire a minute ago and ripped my laptop off the truck and it hit the ground. I, oh my gosh. I wasn't very happy with myself, let's put it that way. So, they don't show nothing there, of course. This one actually has a 40 amp fuse in it instead of a 30 amp fuse. But what I'm not understanding with this whole situation is, um, they're showing this here, right? They're showing a line coming off the battery and this is our fuse and this is the ignition switch. But I don't see, I haven't figured out where they're powering up. I mean, there's gotta be a wire, a battery feed somewhere going into the cab to feed the ignition switch. And I'm not seeing that. I gotta figure out what's going on there. So we got a battery positive negative here, but that's our nine pin data link connector. And then the ignition, obviously, to wake the ECM up. I'm not really seeing... What do we got here? Uh, coming over here to... So i got to figure this out. Okay, so I'm trying to figure all this out. So, I went out and looked at that old truck. So we got... There's our ignition switch. A means cab. One, five... Is ignition switched, I think, or something like that? Um, let's come over here to the next page, and you'll see we've got a 100-amp mega fuse. What's this? So we could go to 331. But anyways, this this 6RD, so that's a six number 6 wire. It's, a, it's this size right here. That's a number 6. So number six wire and it's red and then 14 means cab battery feed okay a is cab so that's coming over and feeding the cab fuse block and here's the cab off this truck that we took the engine out of and here's that 100 amp fuse right there okay so they got a cab feed going in here i'm not really certain what they're doing with this one here um, but this would have been, see, they had that, they had this going up there from this, what do they call this battery isolator or whatever the hell it was they had on here. They had that on there and see how that's feeding, that's feeding this junction block right here. Must have been for their crane controls, but I'm guessing, but so what we need to do is i can take this whole fuse block what is it it's riveted on there huh i need that little block and everything you can take a chisel and knock those aluminum rivets off pretty easily and pull that whole thing off of there but we're gonna need the 100 amp fuse and we'll have to run that one wire that I've got in there. I'm just going to cut the end off and put a half inch eye on the end. Go from the battery to this side of the fuse. And then this side can power up my fuse block. Okay. Kind of curious as to what uh, body accessory, wiper, high low, body marker, ignition, starter. Okay. So there should have been a big wire going into it right back through here. Okay, and that's probably... Yeah, that's going right into here. You can see it. That's going into here. Into this loom here. It loops around and it comes in through here. 
I don't really understand the way they did that because it would have kind of <sighs> that that whoever wired that didn't wouldn't thinking too clearly because if they're feeding the cab right here this this one should be over here like that okay and then yeah because if the fuse pops you know you you want everything to be dead you don't still want if this fuse panel something shorts out here it's going to have constant battery feed on it all the time it's just going to burn the truck to the ground you got to have it over here so and this has got to be the feed side so if the fuse pops it kills everything why would you wire that like that and put that over there okay whatever anyway um so I'm gonna go knock these rivets off. I'm gonna pull this off of here and then figure out how I'm going to mount this somewhere. And then I can put power to my fuse panel, kind of like this one. Something like that. Okay, so I've been doing more and more wiring. Let's see what we got here now. Ugh. Hopefully that fuse is good, huh? I got it wired. I'm gonna the tabs that and I don't like the way this fuse panel mounts. I wish it mounted to where the fuses and the relays were facing you instead of this sideways garbage here. I might redo that and take I'm trying to think, maybe I could take a piece of angle iron and mount it there where those two holes already are, and then drill two holes in the angle iron and then mount the fuse panel out i mean that's just stupid the way that's mounted there let's see if we got any power battery power what happened here <clears throat> what happened here man ah, i must have unhooked it when i was pulling the grounds off when i put the battery yep I'm going to put the uh, good old, uh, I, oh, when I pulled that nut off the stud on the starter to put the wire on there. Okay. Power there. Power there. Now we should have power on all the pin 30s on this. Let's look and see which one is pin 30. It's going to be that one on the top. Got battery power on the relays now on all the pin 30s which is what it's supposed to have okay so the blue wires are to i'm trying to remember how this the black ones obviously the ground to the signal side of the relay and they have those jumpered in there to every ground and then the white wires are going to be the um, signal side of whatever, say, if you turn the key on, the ignition, that signals the relay to latch. The yellow is the output coming off pin 87 to whatever component you're powering up. And then the blue wires are basically um, coming through the fuses. And the way this fuse panel is works is it oh i see well i i thought the relays were latching so it's going through the fuses before okay i thought it was going through i thought the relay was latching then going through the fuse but no it's going through the fuse and powering up pin 30 on the relay that's kind of the way i'm understanding this so these will go out to whatever, I'm trying to think this through here. What the hell are they doing here? Hmm. Let's go look at this little, there's a little diagram in the, I know the white ones are the signal, the black ones the ground for the relay latch. The yellow ones I thought were coming off pin 87. These are obviously coming straight off these fuses. 
So they're not using the fuses in conjunction with the relays, I'm guessing, on that circuit. Okay. Seems a little bit strange. I thought the relay was latching, then putting power to the fuse is kind of what I was under the impression it was doing. And I'm going to have to run. I'm trying to decide. So now, if you look at the wiring diagram on Cummins, they're showing a battery power going into the cab with an inline 5 amp fuse in it going to the ignition. So should I put a wire right here and just go straight through here and then put an inline 5 amp fuse in there? Is that what I should be doing? Or should I just come over... Actually, why not use one of these and put a 5 amp fuse in the available... Well, that would make way more sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, available, available. Okay, so... That is that a 5 amp right there? I think these orange ones are 5 amp. If I can get it out of there. Yeah. Orange ones are 5 amp. So, what I can do... So what I can do is... The first fuse is F1. Actually, I'm looking at this. I've got it mounted upside down. It's actually like this. Let me see here. Yeah, it would be like that. There's the relay R5 and R6. Yeah, up here. So, where is the 5 amp fuse? That's going to be... That's going to be, I, I, well, I can always, that's what I can do. I can just put the 5 amp fuse wherever I want it, and that's what I'll do. I'll put that 5 amp fuse wherever I want it. Uh, get all screwed up, getting all turned upside down and everything here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the 5 amp fuse in whatever one I decide to go to. Um, I guess these aren't marked, I don't think, here. Telling you which available slot they're going to. So I guess we could take an ohm meter and go to that, pull the fuse out of that blade and check every one of them until we figure out which one we're going to be on and go off that one. Oh, probably kind of pulling my head out of my butt. It's just a simpler way to do this is just pull the fuse out of the one you're going to use, which this is an available slot, is what they say on the diagram. And then just check them all. Whatever one doesn't have any battery power is the one you're going to use. I would say it's that one right there. Let's strip it. That way we know what we're. Okay, so basically I'll splice into that one right there. Go ahead and I'll put this fuse in here. 5 amp fuse, I'm going exactly what the wiring schematic says. 5 amp fuse. And then we'll go around through here with a wire to the ignition switch. And then I'll show you the power out on the ignition. Let's see, it should be coming... So we're gonna have a yeah we're gonna have the battery feed to the ignition switch. Actually, I might be wrong about the whole five amp fuse thing. The five amps on the ignition side of it. So it's our. So that's what I'm not understanding with this whole thing. Is it? Well, yes, I do understand it. So it's probably a good idea to fuse that, but I might put a higher amperage fuse. I see what they're doing here. This fuse here is this 40 amp fuse, but they're showing it on Cummins side of it. Okay, they're not showing it on the international side. Well, they probably do, but the international's wiring schematics is, it's confusing. 
So what we'll do here is I'll take that five amp fuse out of there and the battery side of it, because they're, they're showing, they're not showing the way it is there, which International did their own thing, right? They're showing the 30 amp fuse back here, which is, this is the trans one here. And this is the ECM fuse right here, which is a, this one here has got a 40 amp fuse in it. And this one's got a 10 amp in it for the transmission controller. So that's what they're showing there. They're not showing the battery feed to the cab basically, or to the ignition. They, they kind of are here, but they're just showing it coming straight off that, which it doesn't do anyway. So we'll just, we'll, we'll take that five amp out of there and I think I'll put like a 25 or something like that in there. And then the wire coming off of the ignition switch, coming back out, it can come to one of the availables for a five amp. And then we'll go down to pin 39. And then that's where I've got to figure out pin 39, where is it, you know, where's pin 39 on this plug right here? So, which I've got that diagram somewhere in there too. I just got to find it. It's, this is the long part here. Fabricating and building stuff like that, that's the easy part. It's getting the wiring all straightened out and everything functional, that's the problem. Okay, so I don't really get what the hell they're doing here with this clean power and all that bullshit. We've already got the batteries. Somehow they're showing it teeing in between this connection and the ECM connector. That doesn't make any sense because the ECM power feed, it doesn't come in there. I'm not really certain what they're trying to say there. But anyways, ignition feed, and this corresponds with pin 39, as you'll see over here. Let's go back to quick serve. You'll see pin 39, 5 amp fuse. Okay, go back to this. Pin 39, and it's this wire K97U1, and this is that 4103 is that one plug there, and it's pin 19. So, what is the color? BVT? Let's go look at it and see what we got. <sighs> gonna be pin 19 so this is pin let's see my damn glasses 12 wait, 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 wait 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 is there a legible number on here K nine seventy. Is that what that thing said over there? It was K nine seventy? Be this one right here. Let's go look at that schematic again. See. Ugh. Sometimes they don't quite match up to what's in the damn truck, but. K97U K97U Maybe that's a U on there that I'm not that they get rubbed they get rubbed in half a you can't really tell what they say half the time Okay, K97U, that's what it is. All right. All right, so my kit only has two wire noise connectors, so we got a plug on that. Just kind of laying there for now until I figure out how I'm going to put some split loom up and where I'm going to go with it. 
Um, it's going to be kind of the same situation with this plug. So why, you know, I'm trying to think that I should... I'll have to look in that book and see how they were powering up the ignition side of the transmission controller and have to look at that. But I turned the key on and the fuel shut off solenoid wire had power on it. So that means that's working. So let's go out here to the junk pile and I'll show you. We need to get that data link connector out of there. <sighs> well, guys, uh, it's another day. It's getting towards the end of the day. I started out at four this morning. It's 6 p.m. and I've just about had enough. Um, this guy's really on my, oh, every, I, everybody's on my ass. All I'm going to tell you is I'm doing what I can. For those of you that are waiting for projects, I'm trying to do everything that I can. If you don't like it, you know what? Tough shit. I just, I don't really give a shit. Anyway, um, been wiring and wiring and wiring, and this is the long, this is way, way more involved than even doing the truck wiring the truck wiring is pretty easy because now what i've got to do is i've got to wire the keypads in and i know it looks like shit right now but uh i still got like i got one keypad wired this is the main plug for it so everything is wired from here to the junction block right and i got one keypad wired now what i don't know and we got to pick up some toggle switches but usually there's a highway and a work switch that electrically switches and what that switch does i know how the throttle pedals are wired on it uh they're wired you're gonna have both these throttle pedals will be the, pretty much the same I'll show you. This one's got a six pin Deutz connector on it. Um, but what you're going to have is you're going to have you're going to have three wires for idle validation. You're going to have your, your 5 volt reference, your signal return, and your signal line. And the same goes for the throttle. So what, they're, what they do with the toggle switch, you'll put a two position toggle switch in there with six poles on it and what you're what you're doing is the center pole is going to be you know what we'll do on the center pole is you're going to find your signal wire that goes to your throttle and you don't want to you don't want the signal wire off the idle validation side you want the signal wire off the throttle side and you'll have to take that and run that to the center pole on the switch and then basically you'll run one signal wire off of that to one throttle and one signal wire off the other pole and go to the other throttle. You're, all you're doing is switching signals. That way when you go from highway to work, you don't want both throttle pedals being active, especially if somebody's riding in the cab with you and they accidentally hit the throttle. and You've got somebody standing on, you know, you got somebody standing in between the clamp of that hay squeeze and the trailer and some kid gets in here and hits the other throttle while he's riding with you and kills the guy you know so you, you gotta you, you gotta deactivate you gotta be able to s select them you know so what i'm trying to say and lead to here is i don't so i'll show you what i've got here just so you a little frame of reference there so i, I understand how to switch the throttle pedals that's no problem and i know all this stuff is kind of this is all i've been soldering soldering and soldering and soldering and heat shrinking this will all get you know with split loom and get tied up and look nice when i get done right now it looks like shit but here we go there's this keypad right here as you can see i've got this one working there's the neutral sign and then i can go reverse And it's not going to go into reverse. I don't have the neutral safety or none of that stuff wired yet. Drive. And I can select one, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then go back to neutral. Okay. 
So, uh, so what I don't understand, I don't, I, it's not that I don't understand yet, I just don't know, and I couldn't get a clear answer from the guys up there, because apparently I'm putting in, I'm putting in an Allison that they don't use. They're using a, for as far as I can tell by looking at the nomenclature and how they identify their transmissions, this is a 4000 series transmission. It's got a Muncie uh, PTO on it. Um, turn that off. But it's got a Muncie PTO on it. Um, and it's called, I, it, in International's book over here, so international you have to i'm having to look up the international stuff because this came out of an international so here's all the wires that i wired in right here uh this 4705 is the dash that's that long skinny connector right there that's this one right here okay so uh i was looking at this now this is the panel light bus bar i don't know if he wants that or not I'm, i guess i better well it's not going to have that never mind that's not going to have that because yeah that's that's not going to have that i don't think is it i don't know i'll have to check anyway this is already wired i already wired that the ignition to power up the controller it's the wake-up signal there's a power and ground just like the ecm on the engine there's a main power and ground and then for both controllers um i mean i'm not seeing anything because this plug over here has got some can 1708 wires in it right here this blue and gray i gotta look in this i gotta i'm probably just gonna go home and sit down on the couch when i'm sitting there eating my dinner tonight a lot of people go home and they you know, they watch TV. I go home and read wiring schematics, so the next day I know what the hell I'm doing and I'm not sitting here for hours looking at the schematic. But I don't see anything as far as going to the shift selector for like a CAN network. But I'll have to go up. See, now the only thing I got left to do here is off that, you got the ignition switch, but then you got the push button. I'm going to have to run a wire from the push button to my fuse pan. Explain this start relay setup. So what they're doing here, usually a, usually a, a normal start relay will work as when you have a push button or an ignition switch. That, that when you push the button, it's usually putting signal power to pin 85 or 86. And usually you'll have constant power on pin 30. Well, the way this one's working is they're using the neutral signal which would be coming back in from pin 14 on their crossover and that pin 14 is is feeding pin 86 with power and they've got a ground on pin 85 and then they're using the push button instead of having constant battery power on pin 30 they're using the push button to energize pin 30 on the relay so if you had it in reverse or drive you wouldn't have any signal power on pin 86 from the uh neutral inhibit part of the controller so it's kind of a little bit it's a little bit different than what a normal start relay uh works as i just heard myself explaining it as i was watching my video here to edit it and then I thought, well, that's not very a good explanation. Hopefully, that's a little bit better. If you guys run into this, if you, <clears throat> you got to have these wiring schematics. I mean, you're if you don't have these schematics, you're you're absolutely lost. There's so much stuff going on here that, I mean, you you might eventually be able to figure it out, but I mean, you're going to have to go the long way around, and with a meter and test and everything to figure it out. what they're doing because i know that data link connector that i pulled out of that truck in there it had the 1708 and the 1939 data link wires in it right here so 
the yellow and green are going to be 1939 and the blue and gray twisted pair are the 1708 I don't know if that transmission is running see and I think what we have to do is you're not going to see you're not going to see that data link configuration in the transmission section you got to go up to actual data link to find that um International windshield wipers. We don't give a shit about windshield wipers. But uh, it's been quite a busy day. I went clear down to Gazelle and pulled the PTO out of a New Holland 8870 that slipped the clutches in it. Um, and then I went, came clear back and had an air conditioner on a Stinger haystacker that wasn't working and He'd got a new compressor and a bunch of stuff for it, but all it was was the thermostatic switch was open-circuited. And uh, we just jumper wired the thermostatic switch with a jumper wire so it'd kick the AC clutch on. I said, there you go. And I said, uh, order a switch for it, but it'll work fine. I tried to explain to Marco that most of these 134 systems aren't good enough. They're not like R12. R12... If you didn't have a thermostatic switch in your evaporator core, you were sure as hell going to ice up your evaporator core. A lot of you guys don't, if you don't know what a thermostatic switch for an AC system is, it's got a capillary tube that goes into the outlet side of the evaporator core. And once that capillary tube, it depends. Some of them have, a, some of them will have like ether in them or some kind of gas in that tube. And when the evaporator core on the outlet side of that evaporator core starts getting hot, the gas expands in the tube, which closes the contacts on the switch, which clicks the clutch on the compressor. And when the gas contracts and the evaporator actually gets cold, that gas basically contracts, and then the contacts open and kicks the clutch out. It keeps the evaporator core from icing up. Uh, and I, I told him, I said, you could probably put a jumper wire on that thing and run it till it's in the boneyard i said these 134 systems usually don't even work good enough to do that well guys as i keep thumbing through here trying to figure out how i'm going to wire this data link setup on this and i'm going to have to go out there i do remember when i was in that truck there looking up there towards the dash fuse panel i remember looking at and there was a can terminator resistor in there i'm probably going to have to go pull that off i don't even know where the other ones are i, I got to find those in the i don't know if they're in the wire loom somewhere on the engine or what's going on but anyways uh so i'll keep you guys posted on this we'll keep making videos periodically i'm probably going to be doing a lot more on this because i got to get this thing done i mean this guy's got a lot of hay to move and uh you know he's renting the hay squeeze and and it's just, I don't know, there just ain't enough of me to go around. I mean, he's being very patient as well. And there's quite a few people that are being patient with me. But yeah, if you're out there listening, I'm trying, man. So anyways, it is what it is. I'll see you on the next one.